dear devotees and friends and Friday evening we discussed can man be God it was important because if we don't know whether we can be God and actually what is going to happen after we practice the spirituality so naturally you don't get the inspiration and when Sri Ramakrishna said the God realization is the goal that is the inspiration we can become God we can realize God and Swami Vivekananda also said the Godhood is our birthright you surely achieve over there we discussed about that how a man can become God because it needs the potentiality of God otherwise one cannot become God whether the university is very good the teachers are very good everything is good even then a cow can never become educated into that university because that potentiality to understand that it is, is not there the so similarly the human being can never become God if there is no potentiality so we found that there is there second then we discussed can God become man that is also very important because we need a teacher who can be the best teacher than the God himself but can God come down as a human being and can be with us and guide us inspire us so that we can reach to the goal we found it is also possible not only the Hindus the Christians and the Buddhists particularly Hindus and Buddhists very categorically they believe that the God can be incarnated the Muslims and the Christians also believe but in a little distance they say uh, the begotten son of God or the messenger of God but we say not God himself came and he manifested and that is the only difference now we discuss that the man and God and ultimately Sri Ramakrishna the man and God both in the afternoon session today we discuss that Sri Ramakrishna he is the man and he is the God himself both sometimes he was manifesting himself as God and sometimes just ordinary man asking about uh, many other things which he was not knowing as if so he was curious to go to the Jew he was so eager to go and attain some functions and like that but at the same time he was God himself now the last uh, that in, in this series of the retreat we will discuss Sri Ramakrishna the path and the goal <coughs> Shami Vivekananda what is the path of Sri Ramakrishna that means what is the philosophy of Sri Ramakrishna tomorrow I will be speaking about the Achinta Veda Veda Bada of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Samannaya Bada of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna Bada means the philosophy as because you know tomorrow is the holy and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's birthday and 350 years before Sri Ramakrishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he propagated a philosophy which is known as Achintya one whom you cannot think that means the Brahman Veda is different a Veda is not different that is the philosophy is different and is not different both Achintya Veda Veda that tomorrow I'll give the talk and Sri Ramakrishna Samannaya Bhada. What is the path of Sri Ramakrishna? What he is teaching? Swami Vivekananda, he wrote a wonderful composition and then afterwards people just sing in that and there he is mentioning Atoya Tatta Samahita Chitta About Sri Ramakrishna, Vivekananda he is expressing his view 
And Vivekananda was the best person to understand Sri Ramakrishna. Because in every inch he examined Sri Ramakrishna. He was questioning everything. Other people were becoming angry. Why you are asking so much? When Sri Ramakrishna is telling that, why don't you accept it? No, I must understand it clearly. But that Vivekananda, now he is giving an idea about Sri Ramakrishna and he wrote in four lines, Advaya Tattva Samahita Chittam Projala Bhakti Patabrita Vrittam Karma Kalevara Advuta Chistam Then lastly he said, that is my Guru, Yami Guru Sharanam Bhava Vaidyam He was the Bhava Vaidya, Vaidyam is the doctor, Bhava means the worldly thing, the worldly, the desire, that is the bondage. And that is binding us all the time and naturally, again and again we are taking birth. There is a very good doctor who comes and then gives the medicine and we are free from that disease. Bhava Roga. One of our Swamiji was there. The Ramakrishna Mission varieties. So, uh, and that is the uniqueness of Sri Ramakrishna. Different type of flowers. Otherwise the bouquet won't be good. So, one Swami, we had in the ashrama three or four different type of vehicles. On every vehicle used to mark cross, red cross. So why Swamiji, all the vehicles are having the red cross, all are not ambulance, but no, no. We are Bhava Roga Vaidya, so. <laughs> in whatever car we are going, the Bhava Roga Vaidya. Vaidya means the doctor. And the Roga, that the disease is Bhava Roga. Bhava Roga means accepting this universe, accepting this world as true. And accordingly we are behaving. So Sri Ramakrishna came and told, no, this world is not true. Then he gave a wonderful, to make that easy for the people to understand. He said, see, whom actually you think that, who loves you most? My wife. Are you sure? It's not Sri Ramakrishna, he's telling the story of a person. The person that his guru was telling, do you think your wife loves you so much? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, let us do a test. Take this a little, another you know, medicine. Just put it in the mouth and immediately you will die, as if you will die. But your consciousness will be there. And you will be understanding, listening all this conversation. But apparently, there will be no sign of life. And your body will be in different, very deformed. You see what happened. And when everything is over, if you like, keep this other one in your hand, just put it in my, at your mouth, and you will be again back to normal life. The disciple, he took that, and he slept, before sleeping, he put that medicine, and the next day morning his wife started crying and calling the neighbors and his uh, relatives. Look at these, my wife, uh, uh, husband has died and look at, well, I don't know what happened. Yesterday night the person was alright, suddenly he has died and his body was disfigured in such a peculiar way. It's so difficult to take him out from the door of the room. Then the villagers, they said, okay. Let us break this door, then make it open, so that we can carry him in out, because we have to take him to the cremation ground. Then the wife was telling, now the man has already passed, and what is the use of his body? But if the door is not there, and if again I have to fix it, I have to spend so much of money, now so many children are there, I have to look, take care. So better cut the body of my husband and take then the husband, he took the other pill and got up. Oh, is this the love? I was thinking that you like me so much and love me so much. This is my house, I built. And all the expenditure I bore. And now, 
you had no concern for me and thinking that my body should be cut and then take it out. No one actually loved. So that is the thing. That we, when we understand it, this all temporary thing. Don't be afraid. The real loves are also there. But this is a, as an example they say. And obviously, this is the truth of the reality of the world. Now, if you put your mind in this world, you will suffer. So, Bhavaroga Bhaitya, the God himself, he comes, he is the doctor. But how he was helping people? Advaya Tattva Samahita Chittam. Inside, it is all Vedanta. A dvaya. Dvaya means two. A means negative. A dvaya means only one. The conception of one means Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta. Apparently, Sri Ramakrishna is crying for Krishna. Mm. Sri Ramakrishna is crying for the Rama. Sri Ramakrishna is going and worshipping Goddess Kali and crying for Goddess Kali. And apparently, he is a great devotee. But in reality, he is Vedantin. He is Advaya Tartha Samadhi the Chittam. Swami Vivekananda, when he established the Ramakrishna mission, he wanted to have this idea that duality and also non duality or Dvaita both should be practiced. Now, the European that time they were following Swami Vivekananda, they were going over there. It was very difficult for them to follow the Indian ritualism. Some people, the life, but majority don't understand the ritualism. And by the as the, uh, the priest was doing over here, he was touching like this, he was touching like that, and he was going on telling so many mantras. Even the Indians also don't understand that. Chalo, in the from the beginning of our life, as because we are habituated, so we accept it. But it is very difficult for the Europeans. So, Vedantic practices should be there. So, he established Advaita Asrama in Mayabhati in the Himalaya. And there he said there should not be any image or picture of God or goddesses. Only you have to think of yourself, the Atman, Atman. That is the practice. But it is very difficult you know, to practice the Atman all the time. So what to do? Secretly they started puja. One brahmachari, he started doing the puja secretly inside the room. Then Swami Vivekananda was visiting himself and he had the habit of going to different rooms to check whether everything is alright. Suddenly he will go unannounced. Without any announcement he used to visit the rooms of the brahmachari to see everything is neat and tidy or not. And there he saw that Brahmachari is regularly worshipping Sri Ramakrishna's photo, keeping on the table, not outside, within his room, but still he was. Swamiji told, Oh my God, the old man still here. <laughs> <laughs> and Sri Ramakrishna passed away in 50. When today's the standard, he is not at all an old man. But in those days, like the, his days to take. Sri Ramakrishna. Swamiji's guru, but he used to love him so much he could say like that. Oh, old man is here. Then he didn't say anything to the Brahmachari, he was a novice, so he called the Mahanta, Swami Sarupananda, Vivekananda's disciple. He said, How come that I told that there should not be this type of. If that boy cannot practice Advaita, send him back to Belurma. Bring those who can really practice. Now, this Brahmachari. He won't give up. He wrote a letter, letter to Marsharadamani Devi. Mother, Sri Ramakrishna, he is our Ishta Devata, our chosen deity. And we, we should not worship him. What Swamiji is telling? Maybe that he spent some few years in the Western world, so he has changed his mind. He is not liking Sri Ramakrishna that way. So please tell me what shall I do? Advaita, Advaita, worshipping Sri Ramakrishna, Mother, Marshaladamani Devi. 
the wife of Sri Ramakrishna. And in that way he was not educated at all. But when she wrote back, straight away she wrote, Your Guru, that means Sri Ramakrishna, Guru Maharaj Ji Ki Jayati say, Your Guru is Advaitin. And you are all Advaitin in that way. Vivekananda is correct, follow his words. So Advaita, seeing the divinity in every being, that was there in Sri Ramakrishna. He used to go to those people, the ladies, in those days the ladies who used to uh, become the actresses in, in the theatres and all, they were not looking you know, accepting as a good character lady. So uh, the, the people never used to talk to them. For, uh, okay, when the function is going on, they used to go and see all the dramas, but never they, they used to talk to them. Sri Ramakrishna is a priest, is a brahmana, and he was accepted as a guru by so many people. He used to go to them and bless them by touching their heads. When he saw that in that bad area, he saw the ladies waiting over there with all the dresses. He told, oh mother, you dressed in this way? Or you like to enjoy in this way? Good. He never could see anything different. And we know when a person was walking on a ground, the grasses were there. He was walking on the grasses. Sri Ramakrishna told, ask him not to do like that. He is walking on my chest as if. So association, the feeling of the living everywhere. Two boatmen, the fishermen, they were fighting and the boat was on the mid Ganga. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the shore in the Lakshinesha. The one man bit the other man at the back. Sri Ramakrishna got the mark. How is this possible? The association with each and every soul, Advaya Tatta Samayita Chitta. He is crying, Mother, Mother, but within himself was the Advaita. And the next, he says, Swami Vivekananda said, Projala Bhakti Patabrita Vrittam. Outside, as a glaring devotion. Nothing but devotion. Is a constantly calling on the goddess Kali, O oh Mother, must reveal before me. And it, it happened in so much so that he decided to cut his own head at the feet of the goddess Kali. It is unbearable to the, the separation. You must reveal to me. And he used to go and fight with the mother, Divine Mother Kali. You revealed yourself before the Kamala Kanta. And he revealed yourself before so many others. Why not before me? Why you should not? I am also your son. Maybe that I didn't attend school. Maybe that I am not that way educated. Does it mean that you should not accept me as your son? That way he used to pray. And every day when he used to see that the sun is setting, he used to rub his head and rub his face on the, the Ganga, that, uh, the bank of the Ganga. In a way, he used to rub and cry, another day is past, Mother, another day is gone from my life. Even today also you didn't come. Every day is going away from my lifespan. And when I am going to realize you, so people used to think, is it possible for a person to really cry for God in such a way? But that was the devotion, the wonderful devotion of Sri Ramakrishna. Prajala Bhakti Pratabhita Whatever he used to find best, he used to bring it for the mother, Makali. He used to offer to Makali. He used to see everything. Even in the night he will get up and run and see that an ant has come and maybe just in a stone image 
and the flowers were there and maybe there. No, it may bite mother. So he went and then removed that. That was the devotion. So in one side we see the Advaita, no God, no this creation, nothing but the consciousness everywhere. Again, the mother is the all, Makali. And then Karma Kalibara Adbhuta Chishtam. The karma, jnana, bhakti, then karma. The Kalibara, his body, used to go to all people to tell them, believe me, in the I am swearing in the name of my mother, there is God. You can talk to God. You can see God. Believe me, only two things you need. Faith and sincerity and nothing else. Only the thing that you have to offer to God is the tears and nothing else. So please do that, please do that. He used to go to people, man to, and they used to laugh at him. And they used to got jokes, so oh, look at this man. And they say that he is mad. Pagla Brahman is a mad Brahmin. Constantly crying for God and asking others also to cry for God. What you want? Name, fame, the physical comfort and all these worldly things, everything will come. Only we take the name of God, take the name. And he showed before everyone. A wrestler came from outside and he challenged the wrestler of, you know, in those days, the rich people just to keep some wrestlers and the outside the wrestlers will come there will be a competition and naturally the landlord of that the rich man who was having his own wrestlers he wanted that my wrestler should win but his wrestler the temple wrestler he gave up the practices mostly used to go and sit before goddess kali he used to pray and when Sri Ramakrishna used to go, this fellow also used to go. He was supposed to go on practicing and making the body strong. Instead, he used to cry, he used to pray, he used to meditate. Sri Ramakrishna used to like him. Now the outside wrestler came from UP, very strong. And then this man told from, to Sri Ramakrishna, they used to call him Baba. Baba, what will happen to me? I won't be able to fight with him. Because I have lost the practices and then he is so strong. By the master will be very happy and he will feel insulted if I cannot win. Sri Ramakrishna told, you have faith on mother, right? Go and pray to mother. Mother can do everything. When that person, the other person, two, three days before the competition, the other person was going on drinking the raw milk, liters after liters because to become strong. And then was going on doing different type of exercises. This man was praying and praying and praying before mother. Save my face, save my face, save my face. Because I won't be able to win by mine. But you have to help me. Then only I can save the face of my master. What was the result after that? The wrestling competition? This man won. So people wondering, oh, how could he? But at ease, because the mother is all powerful, the mother is keeping her hand on the head of anyone, he can do miracle. Anyone. So that Sri Ramakrishna showed, karma kalibara atabhuta chestam, you have to go on trying, trying and trying, go spread and go on telling people, I believe in this. You too should believe. Please do it. This will be good. What by telling lies and cheating people and doing these and that, creating problems for others, what you are gaining? Nothing. So why don't you try this thing? You will get more peace, more happiness. The Sri Ramakrishna, we find on this thing for yoga, when he used to meditate, he used to go and he himself told, 
I used to see that image just in front of the Kali temple. There is an image of a yogi sitting, a stone image. Sri Krishna used to go and see the stone image and used to sit below. Then started thinking that I have become stone. I don't have any senses. And only the consciousness inside, only that mother lighted. And there is no con consciousness about the body. Something birds used to come and sit on his head and his shoulder. For hours together the birds used to sit like that, thinking it's a stone image only. People used to wonder. He never fell. When he was meditating like that and the Jamindar, the landlord, Maturnath Babu, he had great respect for Sri Ramakrishna. Other, you know, the priest, they are feeling jealous. So what is there in him? He behaves very peculiarly, never maintain the discipline. Why the master is so much attracted to him? Mathur Babu wanted to give him $10,000, he refused. Mathur Babu wanted to give a plot of land, he refused. Not only he refused, he took up a stick to beat the Mathur Babu, chased him. Go away. You rascal, you were offering me this thing. I have my mother and I am satisfied. Mathur Babu used to love him so much, he wanted to give whatever he was having. But this priest, they were thinking, must be that he has done something. Must so, the master is always uh, going to this Brahmana. So they were jealous. One day when he was meditating all alone, you know that burning charcoal they placed on his shoulder. Oh, meditating, okay. Now let's see how you meditate. So they were carrying the burning coal, the, the one coal they kept on the shoulder. But that, even when the, his body was burning, the coal, the burning coal lighted, it was going down in the, on, on his shoulder. Other people, they smell bad way. They came running what happened. They saw that. Immediately they saved him, bandaged him and applied medicine and all. Sri Ramakrishna couldn't find. But afterwards he understood, this is the man. He did. When the uh, someone told, why don't you tell Mathur Babu ab about him? Or oh, no, no, if Mathur Babu comes to know, he will kill him. So nothing, they only jealous. You know, they don't know. So that was his control, the yoga. So he used to practice meditation in that way. This karma work used to go to house to house. Anywhere, anyone, Calling the name of God used to visit him. Even today, Sri Ramakrishna, Mother told, Swamiji told, if anyone is sincerely praying to God, Sri Ramakrishna will come. Well, sure. He's so happy if anybody is crying for God. You cry for so many things. Can't you cry for God? He used to say. Then one Swamiji here in California, perhaps, he mentioned that if one can cry for 24 hours, at a stretch for God, you will realize God. One lady thought that, let me practice. 24 hours is not much, let me. <laughs> so I will get the realization. So she closed the door inside. She sat in the room and started crying. After 10 minutes, it was so difficult to cry because there is no reason to cry. <laughs> so, so crying for God, that was impossible. And he said, Sri Ramakrishna said, that you cry for so many things, why can't you cry for God? If you can, you realize God. It's so simple. So this is the love you have to develop. So what is the path of Sri Ramakrishna? Path and the goal we are discussing. So what is the path? Four yogas. Jnana, Bhakti, Karma, Dhyana. All the four. Not only that. Even the other religious paths also the same path, leading to the same goal. He practiced that. He practiced the Sufism, the Islam Sufism. That also, he said, it is also a 
correct way to go to God. But if you practice, you will realize God in a different way. The ultimate is there. That is also possible. He practiced all that he said, all paths are leading to the same goal. But mainly for the Hindus, four yogas, jnana, bhakti, karma and dhyana. Any of the four, just practice. So that was his path. And he showed in his life in a different way. Then what is the goal? Sri Ramakrishna himself is the goal. When you reach over there after realization, after practicing on the verge of the realization, whom you will meet? Sri Ramakrishna. He was the God. He was not an ordinary person. So, Swami Vivekananda said that he was, someone was telling that oh, this is the God, that is the great person. Swami said, what you are talking about? He was the father of God. Like that he said. Sri Ramakrishna was like that, so powerful, but so humble, unthinkable. Just a look at a glance, he could transform the people. Just a glance, a touch, a word, is to transform the people. He never killed, punished like Rama or Krishna, but he could transform the people just by touch, just by look. That was that power he was having, unthinkable. So this, Sri Ramakrishna himself said, I saw one day that from this, that means this is the body, Sri Ramakrishna's person, body, Satchidananda came out. And this is only the cover and nothing else. But inside, Satchidananda that Brahman, that consciousness within. He himself was telling like that. How can we accept? Anyone can say like this. One gentleman was telling, I was in Himalaya, the we were having a meeting, and I don't know where from he came, and he was telling, I was in Himalaya, I have seen my past life, I know my present and future, and everybody was laughing. So what is the next future? Then they were asking. So they never accepted his words. Rather, he became uh, the shut of a, a the funny person. They never expected him. There was no respect for the word of a person when there is no conviction. But when Sri Ramakrishna was telling, a person who never cared for himself, there was no little ego in him. He was so humble, so humble. Girish Chandra Ghosh, when he heard about Sri Ramakrishna, then he came to meet him. And he was so egoistic, the Girish Ghosh. If you read the contemporary, uh, the history of the Girish Ghosh, he was a rich man and he was a dramatist and people used to know him and he was very egoistic. He never cared for anyone. And he came to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna, with folded hands, bowed down. Girish thought, okay, he's a holy man. I'm an ordinary person. Anyway, no problem. So he also, Girish also, this is the first time Girish told in my life, I, the bo I put the both the hands and to gesture that I respect you to someone. That's the first time. The moment he did that, Sri Ramakrishna bowed half like that and then he was offering pranam to Girish, well, no, he's a Brahmin, I should not accept his pranam, so I should also do, Girish also repeated that to give back the pranam to him. Sri Ramakrishna placed his head on the floor and then <coughs> did the pranam and Girish really became humble and he also did and he said, this man will conquer the whole world just by modesty. Pranam mantre jagat jai. He will conquer the whole world with this humbleness. That was Sri Ramakrishna. He was not having any ego. But he was very intelligent. In that our afternoon session we were discussing. So anything that he heard, he remembered. 
in the past lives he could see. He was having so much, but all the time so humble. And his behavior was just like a very young boy. The ladies never felt ashamed before him because he was not having any body consciousness. So obviously there was nothing in the history and uh, the story of the Shukadeva and his father Bashadeva. Shuka's father is Basha. Basha was a well-known scholar, Rishi. Shuka was his son. He was 18 years young man and he was going without any clothing because he was not having the body consciousness. He never could put on the dress. He was going like that. And the ladies, they were bathing in a pond. They never cared that boy. He was going. But when the Vashadeva, he wanted to stop him, don't go away. The father running to stop the boy. Immediately the ladies, they covered their body. Then the Vasha told, tell me one thing. My young boy, he was passing through this. You never felt ashamed. I am an old man. Then why you are feeling ashamed of me and shy and covering your body? Then told that boy is not having any body consciousness. If a small boy comes before us, it's just like that feeling. But you have body consciousness, though you are old. So, so that is the body consciousness is totally different. Sri Ramakrishna was not having at all the body consciousness. He never could say I. Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. And one person, he was not believing God. But uh, what to do? He came to Sri Ramakrishna to see, sir, I like you. But I don't have faith in God. How you will advise me? Sri Ramakrishna remained quiet. Then after some time when the person was going away, then he said, sometimes remember me, that will be sufficient for you. Remember not me, remember this. <coughs> you know the picture, this is an image, there's a picture, this Sri Ramakrishna's picture. That was, a photograph was taken. Swami Vivekananda arranged his friends, they organized. In those days to take a photograph is a great thing. We have to bring the photographer higher and very costly also. So they took that photograph. In the beginning, Sri Krishna was not very much eager. And when they, particularly Swami Vivekananda, Narendra used to love him so much, when he requested, please see the word, yes, sir, he sat on the floor itself in the Vishnu Mandir. Those who know the Dakshinesha, you can imagine. Then Vishnu Mandir the, on the veranda, he sat and the photograph was taken. But that fellow, he was not developing the picture. All others also forgot that that photo was taken. Sri Ramakrishna didn't forget. And when they were taking the photograph, his head went to one side. Then the photographer came, he touched his body, is the chin, to make it all right. The moment he touched, a little pressure, whole body came, just as if there was no weight at all. A grown-up man, in the whole body there was no weight. It came, and he became very so much afraid, he left that body. So almost from one inch high, Zayam Krishna's body left over there and there was no consciousness. This man, without telling anything, he took the snap. And afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna started inquiring to his disciples, Narendranath and Babanath, Hey, what happened? You people, he took the photo, where is my photo, where is my photo? Then ultimately, they got the photo and then showed him. Then he said, this is the photo of a very high spiritual expression. Whoever will look at it will be blessed. Then one day, Sri Ramakrishna went to visit at a little distance. There was Marsh Aradamani Devi used to live in the Naubath. Sri Ramakrishna suddenly, he never used to enter into that room. Suddenly that day he entered and found Mother escaped Sri Ramakrishna's picture along with other gods and goddesses. 
You know the Hindus, they always keep so many gods and goddesses. Lakshmi, Saraswati, Kali, Durga, Ganesh, all will be there. And along with so many other gods and goddesses, Sri Ramakrishna's photo was also there. Then Sri Ramakrishna asked Mother, where from you got it? Then she said, nearby there was a Brahmana and he was having this photo. Recently, he has gone away. In those days, when the people used to feel that I, I won't live long, so they used to go to a very holy place and wait for the death over there. Mostly they used to go to Kashi. That Brahmana, he has gone to Kashi, means he won't come back. He is waiting for the death over there. He gave me from his possession this photo of yours, so I have kept over here. Then Sri Ramakrishna took some flower and worshipped his own photo. And then he declared a day will come in almost in every household, in every houses, this photo will be worshipped. Now in Bengal, if you go to any house, even the offices, Sri Ramakrishna's photo. Everywhere the Sri Ramakrishna's photo is there. People are worshipping him. So Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. Ma Sharada Mani Devi said, if you can't meditate, don't bother. Look at the picture of Sri Ramakrishna. Intently, go on looking at the picture. That is God. And in Bengali he said, Chaya and Kaya are the same. Chaya means the shadow. Kaya means the body at the same. Now the picture, that is the picture, the Chaya, and this Kaya, the Sri Ramakrishna's body, the same. And she used to say the present day, this modern day, people are so intelligent that they have snapped, the photo, taken the photo of God himself. Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. And one day, Sri Ramakrishna, he was lying down and Swami Vivekananda came. And Vivekananda was thinking, is this man, is really God? He was thinking in that way. Because emaciated body, he was lying down so many times, so many things he has seen. But even then the doubts were always there. Because it's very difficult. One day, the another day that is in Dakshinesha, Rakhal Maharaj, he was a young man and he felt hungry and there was no food. Sri Ramakrishna, because he used to consider Rakhal his own son, spiritual son, he went on the, uh, the side of the Ganga and from there he shouted, facing at the Calcutta, Oh Gauri, my Rakhal is hungry, bring some food. Within two minutes, a boat arrived and the lady got down with so much of food and Sri Ramakrishna was standing there after calling. Where he came and he was shouting from there, Hey Rakhal, come! There's so much of food has come for you. And he was the son of a rich man, so he felt insulted. Why you should shout like that before others that I am hungry and the food has come, I have to come running to take the food. That is not the, uh, the civilized way, we should not do like that. Sri Ramakrishna told, but la this moment you told you were hungry, so when the food has come, I give you the call, come and eat. So what is the problem? So that way he was so simple and whatever he said, it was done. It happened. That was Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda used to dream and think that I will do this, I will do that. He was not having any money. But then he went to Ma Saradamani Devi and told, all these thoughts are coming in my mind, but I am not having the people, I am not having the money. And your Thakur, <laughs> then that time he was complaining to Mother, your Thakur is not mine, your Thakur is not listening to me. As a, no, as a son, he was complaining. The mother told that, do you think the thought that is coming in your mind, Vivekananda's mind, 
are different than Thakur's or all Thakur's thought. And it will take shape. Wait and see. Everything came. A huge organization and everything came up afterwards. What he was Sri Ramakrishna said, he showed it. And it was true. Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. What is the path? Paths are four yogas. As the goal, Sri Ramakrishna himself. And who is Sri Ramakrishna? Well, whatever approach you go, he is that. If you go to see the Brahman, to realize the Brahman, to feel the realization of Brahman, Sri Ramakrishna is the Brahman himself. If you want to realize God and have the company of God and enjoy your life, Sri Ramakrishna is the God. If you want to go to Nirvana, Nirvikalpa Samadhi through meditation, Sri Ramakrishna will be there to help you. So that he is all pervading consciousness. After his passing away, when the mother was crying, Masharadamani Devi, then Sri Ramakrishna appeared before him and said, Why are you are crying like an ordinary lady? Where have I gone? And from this room to that room only. What is there? I was always there in this world. And I am here all the time. Only the body I have left. That's all. Why you are crying? That was Sri Ramakrishna. And there was an amulet that mother used to tie over here. Inside there was some holy thing. It was made of gold. In those days Sri Ramakrishna gave it to mother and told Keep it very carefully. And one time mother was traveling in the train. Our right hand, uh, where that was tied, it was on the window of the train. In those days, you may remember, it's all open. There's nothing in the, there's no glass or anything. So she was keeping in hand like that and then she was dozing. She was almost sleeping. Suddenly, she felt that someone is touching his person and mother got up and found in the train Sri Ramakrishna why you are keeping the hand like that there are so many thieves they come and take it be careful cover that hand can you imagine all the time God is there every moment God is there the Sri Ramakrishna is present in every moment everywhere only we need, need a little faith, that's all. We have to surrender. So Sri Ramakrishna is the path, Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. And Sri Ramakrishna's path is all the traditional way you can travel or anything. Only should have the faith and sincerity to cry on God, to call on God. He said sometimes some people can't pronounce properly the name. Some, some, sometimes they say, if you can't pronounce properly, you won't get the blessings of God. Sri Ramakrishna said, who told? Sometimes the very small baby, they can't po properly pronounce Baba or Papa. But if he is one in whatever sound he is creating, the father understands he is calling me addressing me. He will go and take the baby on his lap. So similarly, if you go call God in a different name, maybe the pronunciation is wrong. It doesn't matter. It's the heart. It's the thought. He said again and again, Ishwar moan back him. The God always observe your thoughts. Not the trace. Not the food. Not the place. Not how you behave or talk, but your mind. If you have a simple mind, you will get the blessings of God for sure. But if you have desire for something else, it will take a little time. Because first, the God will give you all those for what you were seeking. Then after getting that, when you are disgusted, no, I don't want this. What do you want? No, I want you. Okay, then it's all right. But after that, again, if you want something else, again you will get, again you will get it. But the God will wait, wait and wait. 
Till you say, I, enough is enough, I am done with these worldly things, I want you. One of Sri Ramakrishna's direct disciples, he was, people used to call him Koka, he was a, he was a baby. And he was suffering, he used to love to drink the tea very much. In those days in India, who will drink tea? So he was somewhere near Vrindavan, not getting the tea, and then the high fever, he was suffering, and he became angry with Sri Ramakrishna. And before the picture of Sri Ramakrishna, he told, what type of God you are? Even you cannot give me a cup of tea, and there is no one around to give me tea. When he was shouting at Sri Ramakrishna, then Sri Ramakrishna appeared and said, Koka, shall I send a group of rich people who will serve you, give you tea and whatever you want, the physical comfort? I can send a group of rich people, but you won't get me. What do you want? Immediately he jumped at his feet and said, I want you. I don't need the rich people or the tea. So I forget about that. I want you. So that is the thing you have to choose. Any worldly thing, name, fame, prosperity and wealth, God will wait. Not that you, you won't come. You will come. Only He will wait. Sri Ramakrishna gave the example. As long as the young children are playing with their dolls, the mother won't come to them. And when they start crying for mother and throwing out all the dolls and the playthings, if any unknown person come and say, I will take you to your mother, immediately they will climb on his lap without any hesitation that he will take me to my mother. That is the faith. That is the love. If you have that love, surely you will realize God. But it is not so easy. So friends, let us conclude. Man can become God. That is for sure. And God also comes and takes the human form to help us, as Sri Ramakrishna did, only recently. And Sri Ramakrishna, though he was in the form of a human being, he was God himself. So many people saw him in so many different ways. And Sri Ramakrishna is the way, and Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. Sri Ramakrishna is the path, Sri Ramakrishna is the goal. What is the path? Sincerity. Faith and sincerity, that is the path. God is there, Thakur is there. If I call him, he will surely come, that faith. And sincerity, every day, every moment, going on crying for his darshan. Come and reveal unto me. Sri Ramakrishna will be there. Waiting for us, that is for sure. Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om. If you have any question, then five minutes we can have the question answered.